This is WFO Radio. Hey guys, WFO, we're here at I-70 Motorsports Park, the soon-to-be home of Flying H Motorsports Park, the newest NHRA national event track. We are gonna get a behind-the-scenes tour. Just one year from now, seems impossible, but the stars of the NHRA Camping World Series we're planning on being here. Can they make it happen? What is the status of the track surface? All that we're about to find out. We are here with Kurt Johnson. Kurt has invited us today. Thank you, Kurt, for this. You bet. And why is this so important to you personally? Well, I like this place because it's everything I've ever wanted to put into a racetrack. And, and Scott Higgs owns it. He's kind of given us a blank slate, said, make me a good racetrack. And of course, he still approves everything. But um, we've kind of had a blank canvas to make what we want. Where and are we now? We are at, this is the staging lanes. Starting lines, obviously, right over to the right there. If you see that Porta John down there. Yes. That is where the return road splits so to get to the staging lanes you'd hang a right at that Porter John and you'll come around here and it'll be a big lane eight lane curved staging lane that will go straight right about where that skid steer is so we'll be able to get three pair of cars running straight and because originally it was going to bend all the way in but uh, think about like when you go to Maple Grove and you got it just slows the show down when we can only have one pair of cars sitting so we can have three pairs sitting There'll be eight lanes out in here, grandstands, this grass area out here, just beyond the Porter John. No, I'm sorry, just this way there's a light pole base. Yep. That's about where the grandstands start on the left side and the right side. And uh, I think we'll have about, to start with, 12,000 seats per side. And uh, actually, I think we'll have 12,000 over here and like 8,000 to start over there. Um, and then over way over to your left here, that'll all be paved, and that's going to be sportsman pits. Wow. And pro pits we'll get to a little bit later, but they're behind the circle track. And it's a tiered, tiered pro pit area. So you'll have one area that's kind of top fuel, one area that'll be pro stock, pro mod bike, and the next tier up will be uh, pro mod, comp, etc. And they're the way I'm explaining is they're like mall parking lots. So it's like three mall parking lots, and the return road will be the outer ring of each uh, pit. So as you come winging in, towing your car, you'll grab whatever pit you need, run around the outside of it, grab the aisle you want, and then when you're coming back to the staging lanes, you'll go the other way. So we'll always have traffic going one way in the pits. And wow. I think that'll be pretty slick. All right, let's go check it out. Let's do it. So some of the things on this wall, let's go down a little bit. Yep. Obviously, right there, that big piece of conduit with the holes in the wall. Yeah. That starting line. This is a tree? So is this, that where the yep, tree comes up? tree will be down there. That next conduit. So down. we're like we're, staged we're up practically. We're stage right here. Oh, my gosh. And we got redundant conduit on everything. Everything's got a redundant conduit. So we'll never have that problem. If you look at the wall, hey, it's a big wall. Yeah. You ain't gonna move this thing. So we're built on a footer. This was all poured with a machine. So we poured the footer first and the footer has a gutter built into it, but it's not like some of the other racetracks where we just have a four inch gutter that you could drop a tire in. That's a 7% grade to the wall. Okay. So it'll still hold water. There's drains underneath here every 50 feet going to the outside. No weepers. Should not have weepers. This is treated lime and some cementitious treated base. And it is so hard that we're still gonna have to put some forms in when we put concrete in. We had to go buy a four horse drill to run a bit. I guess it would be a one and a quarter inch bit. We had to have a three horse motor to get through this stuff. Wow. And so it is hard. Uh, we got a lot, of, this is a long track. Yeah. Yeah, this is a 4,000 foot long track. Wow. Um, so here, so I see the return road. You guys are a lot further along than I thought. So that's actually, if you want to stop right here, 
So that return road, vision, but the far side of that return road is going to be grandstands. And okay. So literally, we're having to change some things in the circle track because the grandstands are going to be that far over. These power boxes are more or less the end of the grandstands. They'll be under the grandstands. Okay. So we're going to have the return road in front, front. of the grandstand so you can have Pomona-like hero moments. And it's kind of not just that. Everybody that's going to the staging lanes will go in front of the grandstands. So we're not... I shouldn't say everybody. There will be another entrance from the very back. Right. But a majority of your pro cars are going to come back down from the pits, down in front of the stands to go to the staging lanes. And I think that's a cool factor. It used to be Gator Nationals, yep. 1980. They would tow in front of the grandstands. You'd see, this, there's Snake. Awesome. Oh, my God, it's Snake. And I think that brings some of the show because, you know, if, if I'm a, a fan that only goes to once one show a year, every chance I can see John Forrest, Ron Capps, Matt Hagen, every chance I can see him, it just brings that excitement up more and more. So that was one of the things I, I thought was important. The eighth mile mark. And this will be another Porter Tree National Event track. Oh, really? Allie's working with us hard. Okay. And I think she's even designing some new stuff. That's so, exciting. Um, other little things, we've got drains every 20 feet uh, through the wall. The, the track is unique in pitch because it starts flat and then you twist the track into a 1% grade. So when you do your burnout, you're not on a one or two percent grade during the burnout and we should not wash out during the burnout got it we're flat out to 60 feet and then we twist the track into a grade and that's all built into the wall too so go to a thousand foot right here thousand right, foot the tall wall tall wall is where a thousand foot thousand is foot. shut down look at this you i don't even want to ask but there's a lot of money in wall here folks this is a, <laughs> a lot of money in wall here there, there's over nine hundred thousand in this wall walls are expensive <laughs> People always think that the racetrack is your your main part. Now this is a, I'm a I am pro part asphalt. I I like concrete tracks, but really if you look at the records, we have more national event records or more NHRA records on dual asphalt concrete tracks than we do pure concrete tracks. And you can't just say that that means that an asphalt track's better. It doesn't. It's just also those are tracks are in the good air. So you gotta, you gotta look at it both ways, but you can run just as fast on asphalt. Anytime you cut concrete, <clears throat> it bows. I don't care what you do, it bows and that's a bump. Right. Asphalt does not do that. Asphalt has less of a life than concrete, but you still have a 15 year life. So we're asphalt from 720 on the track to, to the end. Now this is from 720 to 1320, this is a special asphalt. It's not just plain old asphalt. It's got chemicals in it, polymers. Um, it's a unique mix to, to not come apart with the traction compound and also be an extremely tight compaction. Is the clutch gonna be locked up before you get to the asphalt, sure. like 700 feet, like it's locked up long before then or right around then? Yeah, they, they're actually locking up 400 500 oh, see so it, it's so like you're the, locked you're gone you're locked and gone no transitions the, no tunnels nope the no. other thing we're doing is we're doing asphalt next week asphalt's first first off i want the asphalt in the hottest time of year because you can make it smoother mm -hmm. he, he ain't gonna run us over okay good and uh or at least he'll just hit my side so um we're doing asphalt next week and we'll start from this end and there again, 720 feet where it comes together. But we're actually going to start paving probably about 680. And we'll get the paver up on plane so it's perfect and it's where we want to be. And we'll do that for each run. We're going to have two pavers, two buggies, eight rollers, everything so we don't have cold joints. And where I'm going with that is we're still going to put concrete to 720, but we'll cut all that asphalt off and throw it away because we want where the asphalt starts to be perfect for where the concrete comes off that. You can run concrete to asphalt, but when you're putting new materials in, you can't, it's very difficult to put asphalt in behind concrete because asphalt compacts. Mm. And there's some math formulations to tell you how much we should have, but it's math and it's on paper and it's not always right. And I want this to be perfect. So we'll cut the asphalt off and we'll start concrete off that. That way there's no bump. The whole track is built to move forward and back. 
so we don't get those big ripples in them that you see at tracks after 15, 10 years, 10, 15 years. And, uh, and we'll have expansion joints in the race surface and there's a six inch expansion joint behind the burnout. So both ends of the track can move back and forth because heat and cold, they're gonna contract and expand. Now there's also a junior gate that we left out, but we have the road on the backside for a junior gate. Gotta remember those kids. And uh, uh, I think basically after the track's running, we'll put that in. We should probably turn around right here and go back. All right. Just loop around the gravel. So in all fairness, a lot of this was here. Okay. But that wasn't there in April. There's 35,000 yards of dirt in there. And uh, that all got built up. So where's the tower gonna be? So the tower's over by that con those two pieces of conduit and it runs out towards those two big trees. And it's about 50 foot long, 30 deep, four stories tall. And the fourth being an outdoor viewing. We're sitting in top eliminator right now, which will be, since this is a return road, the bottom of top eliminator will be at least 13.6. So we can get a semi through. Grandstand start right so there. So they'll be driving under the yeah. top eliminator club? Yeah. yeah, you'll drive right under it. That's cool. And uh, and then grandstands start right about where that gravel kickout is, uh, up against the return road. I see it. They'll be right there. And so it gets tight back to the circle track, but we'll never run the circle track at the same time that we're running the drag strip, or that's the current plan. Granted, you could. I think they'd have to beef up the fencing, but you could. Well, but we could. Real nice dirt track. That is a nice dirt track. Most of the seats have backs, and we are not, there's gonna be parts of the drag strip that have backs, but for the most part, they'll be conventional aluminum bleach. So now this is the top, what I'm calling, top fuel pit or the, the main pro pit obviously this will all be paved and so there'll be a ring all the way around this that'll run right up to the dirt track and it'll just be 16 feet painted out we won't park a truck beyond that paint line so that we can run cars around the outside this will also allow us to put at least 20 foot deep luxury chalets bring in tents but all air conditioned all down through here for corporate partners smart and they'll be able to buy i mean granted it's not a suite but i don't i'm sure you've been in some of those tents they're just as nice as indy car formula one when they did the grand prix at miami uh indy car in like 2002 that's what they had they had raised up corporate tents grand prix of st petersburg the whole thing is that people love them and uh, here's the raised wall so this is the thousand foot mark yep and this is where they're supposed to be. So you're seeing the speed, you're, and also the teams will be literally pulled up 13 feet from your tent. There'll be a return road in between here, but you're that close. You can just walk from your tents, go back to your corporate sponsored race car, and, and it's all close. And this looks little, but I've laid it out and we can get 55 pro teams in here with 60 foot aisles up there where that trailer's sitting and that's the next tier of pits <clears throat> and that could be pro stock pro mod comp top alcohol all that stuff there's can, one more tier of pits behind that which, can we go up there sure, no yeah new let's tier. do it this is this could be pro stock pro mod there's room it's a lot of space up here yeah because we're talking a smaller dimension of pit we can get another 65 car teams up here and we have one more tier up there Let's go check that one yeah. out. So multiple layers. This will all be asphalt. All asphalt. Now these two will be asphalt to start. Right. Second phase will be asphalt up here. That's fine. Two giant asphalted pits. Over on the right while we're driving over there, that's going to be motorhome where those beans are planted and additional spill-in parking. Like a campground? Like a, yeah. The Flying H. Call it the Wild West. I was going to say the Flying H Zoo version or. Yeah, just I don't want to copy Jeb's deal. Uh, yeah. But we are. And uh, <laughs> but I don't want to call it the zoo. So, yeah. Uh, with Scott being, Scott's a huge rodeo guy and kind of a stock contractor type person. Um, and so I thought the Flying H Wild West would be kind of a, a cool thing. And we're going to build roads through it. We're, we're copying Brainerd on that part because that motorhome 
um, what's the word I'm looking for? Friends meeting that may not even come to the race. Yeah. Watch it from right there. Yep. We want those people here. Success leaves tracks. It's a great idea. Everybody loves it. It's been around for like 40 years. Why not try to emulate it? Ab absolutely. We're not copying, we're emulating. That's, That's a great it. job. That's it. Because they've done such a great job. An homage to their great success. Um, I wanted it to be grass. I really did. But they've already hardened this, or uh, put done the lime treatment, and grass would never grow on it, and, or any amount of grass. Now that's the pit entrance over here. For, so all the competitors will come in here, and there'll be a fence right about here with a ticket booth. There's enough room. So this on, is like the back gate. Yep, this is the back gate. So <clears throat> there's enough room to stack a hundred rigs, and I figured ninety foot rigs if we double stack them on this road. So. Stacking is always a problem for me coming into a racetrack because obviously we can't just let you in We need to park you right and it needs to be orderly. So with this road This is a long road and we can put a rig on each side and we can get almost a hundred rigs in here So we are heading out the back gate, but this would be the entrance for a racer for racers yep. And we might I doubt spectators will come in here uh, We got three other entrances for spectators Ingress and egress will Another also one. be RV and overflow parking. And what are those? Beans? Beans, yeah, soybeans. This will be the last year they got beans in there. And so this is the back gate. People are going to come into Flying H Motorsports Park. Yep. Flying H Motorsports Park from here. Get your tech card right here. Wow. And then let's head over that way towards that GPS station. Try not to hit that because that'll kind of what? screw up the whole job. What the uh, <laughs> that GPS transmitter? Right oh, there. okay. I, I don't even see the GPS oh, transmitter. You will when we get close to I there. see this giant uh, Kamatsu shovel yeah. with the thing that looks like a little droid out of Star Wars right there. So believe it or not, this station is controlling almost all of our GPS operations for grade on the racetrack. And wow, it's unbelievable how good they've got this equipment. The operator doesn't even have to hardly do anything. And so there it is from here, you'll be able to look down on the multiple tiers of uh, of the track. You'll see cars on track. Over on the left, where that white van's sitting. Yep. That'll be um, uh, Midway. We'll be right in that area. Grandstands are, oh, they end about where that hoe's sitting, that little excavator. Yep. The rest of that will be, I think, we'll put the midway over there. I think TV compound will be right by these trees. Uh, this little crop out of trees. Over here will be all the Wild West and extra parking. And RV parking over on this side will be electrified. That side, that will not. And, uh, and they're also going to have sewer on this side. It's called a sheep's foot. That's called a sheep's foot? Yep. And what does it do? Compacts. So every time one of them little points pushes down into the ground, it compacts the soil under it and, and highly compacts it. Wow. And the more you run it, the more you compact your soil. This right here will get widened out a little because uh, time, oh, time slips is gonna be right there where that, those two orange, or where that orange conduit's coming out next to the light pole. Yep. Let me make sure I'm right there. Yeah. No, 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 I'm sorry. Next one down. That conduit coming out uh, where the road turns this way. Yes. That's time slips. Cool. And the other thing I like about that is you don't necessarily have to get it with your car. One of your team members could run over with a scooter and grab it because it's right there. Second gate. Second gate. We just saw the first gate a while ago. Here's yep. the second gate. First gate we actually haven't put in. So the road's there. Okay, is this where we were a little while ago yep, on the other side of the wall? Okay. The, what I call the junior gate right after the quarter mile, we're going to cut that into place because we're not sure how big we want the gate yet. So we figured it'd be easier to just run the machine through and cut the concrete out. Amazing crop on soybeans this year, by the way. Yeah, I can <laughs> imagine. Bad. It's going to be the last year. Well, sorry, okay so with it. sorry, soybeans, but you got to go. <laughs> you got to go. So then down here, I really tried to thank you guys and TV. Um, How so? Because 
so we've hit, built a huge loop in here. So you're going to have plenty of time to get the cars over to this side, get them in front of the balloons, camera shots. So I envision the balloons being on the inside of this loop uh -huh. because the sun is primarily over there and back here and, and that way the sun's shining into the balloons. Wait a minute. And you have positioned the top end because of the location of the sun so it will be properly on the driver's faces? Where did I start? Oh down, my. Down here with NHRA. Wow. <laughs> that is very so smart, you, Kurt. So the balloons will go on the inside here and then the sun's pointing the right direction so you can do your interviews into the... Uh, into the balloons and uh and plus we got plenty of room to get the cars over here and so they're not running into each other tow vehicles run up that side and just make a loop around here so there's none of that six turn cluster right that we see a lot and this will be a really really nice grassed area that looks visually appealing appealing it's got to look visually appealing yep this is, uh, this is amazing this is amazing there's nobody running we can pull right up into this opening so if you look at where that wall is sitting, yes, there, and where you, where this sand trap wall is sitting, we are 12 feet out. That the left wall is 12 feet outside the, the left drag strip wall, so you cannot hit it with a car. It gets wider. It funnels yeah. out. And then this wall points in. That wall straight. The right wall is straight. The left wall is at about a 13 degree angle to the net. So even if you come in unconscious and you get collected by the left wall, the left wall is going to take you to the net. And, uh, and obviously the net's going to be right at the end of the wall. And then we'll either do a second net or we'll do a line of uh, Nebraska style barrels. And what's that more just uh, soybeans out there? That's soybeans, but there's a road in between there. Oh, okay. A county road so say again this is going to be 18 inch round pea gravel and it goes uphill to the nets which is what we want we want the cars to actually go into the gravel go uphill so they dig into the sand and hopefully they don't even make it to the net because they're digging in we have drains underneath here and i think we got four of them running out to the outsides because obviously all this water is going to collect right here and so all this water will collect and drain out to the ditches on either side it's a pretty unique deal. Excellent. Kurt, thank you very much for this amazing tour. Thanks for being out. This was insane. Hopefully you guys liked it and you're getting a first look at Flying H Motorsports Park. When are we going to be here racing, Kurt? Tell us the truth. Real, real approximation. I think this time next year. This time next year? Yeah, we're running here next year. You need year. me to grab a shovel or anything? I'll do it. Yeah. Why don't you hop on a blade? We got one open right All right, right we're going to go do that, guys. Kurt, thank you so much. No, thank you. WFO.